Hey everybody, Q here from In The Green Creations, and today I thought I'd give you a quick tour of my shops. Uh, we're gonna start up here in the garage, and later we're gonna work downstairs into my newly renovated uh, dust studio downstairs. So let's get started, and we'll talk about the dust collector. The backbone of my entire shop is definitely my dust collector. It is a two and a half horsepower Jet Vortex Cyclone dust collector that I've converted into a two-stage dust collector. Uh, I originally built it with a cylinder that was lower uh, to separate all the chips out, but I had to reconfigure it when I built my CNC cabinet here. Uh, but it still separates chips pretty well, and it does a really, really good job. Uh, so let's just follow this around the shop and uh, take a look at a couple of the tools. I have my table saw sled that I built. This thing is awesome. I, when I designed this, I put two extension wings on each side. For when you're cutting larger material, it helps support it. And you can still put your stopper where you are. Of course, you have to measure, but then you can still make repeated cuts uh, from a, a further distance as well. The dust collector itself is surrounded by a loft that I built earlier this summer. It has a 20 pound air compressor, which is connected to a 10 pound supplemental tank. Both of those are hard lined to this inline filter regulator, which comes out, up, around, and over to this Flexilla hose reel. I absolutely despise this thing because it never goes back to where it's supposed to. But other than that, the dust collector comes out in the six inch PVC pipe, splits, comes up, around, down, and it hops into my table saw router table setup. Uh, my router table is a Rockler Pro Lift, and inside of it, I have a Bora PowerMate three and a quarter horsepower router. Uh, this thing is incredibly powerful and I love how easily it just cuts through things. The saw itself is a ShopFox 2 horsepower W1837 uh, open stand table saw. I think it's a hypoid table saw. It's almost the actual size of a contractor or a cabinet table saw and I, I love it. It's super powerful. Uh, and I built these extension wings on both sides when I was building the router table, so I have a little bit of a larger working surface. Also connected to this uh, part of the dust collector is another down chute. I plan to actually put a box here that'll be able to sweep all of my dust that ends up on the ground. Uh, so that should be a project that you should be seeing later this year. Uh, on the way to the next conjunction is my tool board. All of my hand tools are laid out on this side measuring and marking. Uh, over here is a little bit of my safety stuff, glasses, uh, 3M, PPM masks, clamping, and my cutting tools. And all of that sits behind my miter station. I have a rigid 12-inch uh, chop saw, and I have a fence on both sides so I can accurately and, repeat and repeatedly make cuts. The junction that goes to the miter station also has a second one coming out and this connects to a 10 foot hose that I've connected one of these uh, vacuum wands to and that gives me perfect reach to clean up most of my work table surface. And this baby is the backbone of my shop. I couldn't be happier with how this thing turned out. I use this for almost every single project since the floor of my shop is just curved and not flat and not straight. So this is my reference surface that I use for almost every single project. On top of my surface, what I have cut in is the Armor, the armor Quick Track. Uh, it's like your basic quick uh, T-Track, but instead of one entrance and exit, it's got entrances and exits every single foot. And then what I really like about it is instead of screwing little screws in 
uh, from the top, what it does is it, have, it has a second T-Track that you connect a bolt to and you suction your T-Track into that work table and there is no chance of anything ever lifting out. I don't know about you guys, but I have multiple times with other T-Track went to go tighten something down and the T-Track starts to pull up from the work surface. There is no way in hell that this thing's gonna ever come up. I think it has a 3 8 inch bolt every foot. So yeah, not moving at all. Uh, on this side of the work table, I have some router bits, I have some paint supplies, all of my small tool, uh, small parts storage, screws, bolts, all of that kind of stuff. A uh, couple drawers with my routers, my saws, my hand power tools. Um, and then my drawers, they're all pushed to open, which makes it really easy to open and close the drawers when you're working on something. However, my only grievance is with these drawers, when you're working on something and you go to like lean up, your knees and your hips always hit them and open it. So if you're planning on using push to open drawers on your uh, uh, work table, just to leave, you know, any pulls out of the way, I would definitely keep that in mind because it's a kind of pain in the ass sometimes. Just more power tools over here. S sharpening uh, for my chisels my paint sprayer, and a couple more other tools over there as well. Uh, following the ducting around the shop though, I actually ran a little bit more of the pipe that has a closed end right now, uh, just to leave room for expansion as I add more tools in here, because I know that I'll definitely need more, uh, more ducting at some point in the future. Uh, this is my sheet good storage, nothing too crazy. I used to have a vertical, uh, storage that took up the entire wall, but I took that down to make room for this baby right here. This is the flip cart that I designed to hold my planer and my joiner. My planer is the DeWalt 755, and then I have the Delta 6 inch planer on the bottom side of it too. What I really love about this design that I made is that I do have these extension wings that slide on and create a level surface. I have one for the other side as well, uh, but we don't have to put that on right now. Uh, but it extends that work surface out to help reduce some of the snipe that you get from some planers. Just flip real quick. time between the tools isn't that long. I'd say probably about like 45 seconds or so to change in between them. And then once you unscrew those screws, it flips pretty easily. I guess the only thing you gotta remember to do is take out your tool, put it on your bed, and then you can flip it. It locks in like that. and you're ready to use your planer, or joiner, or planer. Past my flip top cart, I have more wood storage. This is kind of the larger live edge slabs. I have a little bit of barn wood back here that I don't know what to do with yet, but I know I can, uh, I know it's hard to come by and I could get a really good project out of it. Uh, sitting next to that is my Rikon 14 inch open stand bandsaw. I just got this earlier this summer and I don't use it as much as I want to, but it cuts really, really, really well. And I, uh, I use it to resaw and clean up my jigs and things that come off my CNC machine. Uh, can't wait to use this thing more, but it's, it's scary when you get a bandsaw. That's the ducting for the bandsaw. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. More wood storage up top, but oh, thank you. And then over in this corner, this 
So over in this corner, I have my more exotic wood storage, some of my metal storage that I do my welding with. This is my Chicago Electric uh, MIG welder that I got from Harbor Freight a few years ago. Uh, I personally haven't had any problems with it the whole entire time that I've had it, and I've done a good amount of welding projects on it, and it gives a good solid weld. My newer addition to the shop in the metalworking section is the Evolution uh, 355 metal chop saw. This thing cuts through metal, metal like butter, and it is accurate, and the cuts are clean and reliable, and I couldn't be happier with it. It's, it's definitely pushed me to do more uh, wood, uh, metalworking projects. Moving over from our metalworking station, we have my prized possession from the, for the entire shop, and that is the Shapoko CNC cabinet. I built this cabinet earlier this summer when I got the CNC machine, and this thing is a workhorse. I've used it on every single project, if anything, just to create a jig or a template or the entire structure of that flip top cart was cut out on it. Uh, so I've just been trying to learn the programming a little bit more and more every single day because it is a deep hole to go down to and it's easy to get lost. And it's easy to forget things if you don't constantly hone that tool that you're, uh, you're learning with. Uh, but the cabinet itself, it's got a little bit of storage underneath of it and behind it. Uh, down here I have a cat, uh, cubby uh, for the actual electronics. I plan to put my variable frequency driver in there when I get a larger spindle. Uh, I like it because I have a lot of kill switches here attached to most of the power. Uh, that way if something goes wrong, like wrong, I can just flip it off and know everything's safe and not gonna break. Uh, but the machine itself sits inside. It's got two four, in, two four foot lights and a little bit of uh, foam insulation to help with the noise. I know a lot of people go back and forth on saying that they don't care for the noise or don't think that it's too much. But what I like about having this as an actual cabinet is there are often times that I'm in here doing something with finishing and I can have this running in the background or off on the side and I know that all the dust is contained within it and it won't get into anything that I'm painting or finishing. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much my entire shop upstairs in the garage. So let's uh, go downstairs and see the new shop downstairs. Now that we're in our downstairs workspace, we can head over to our indoor dust studio. In here, I have my work surface, which sits all of my tools. I have a bench top drill press, belt sander, bandsaw, and my 12 inch disc sander as well. Over on this side sits my oscillating spindle sander. And all of these tools are hardlined to my central dust collector, which is in a custom made soundproof box. Inside my cabinet, I have a dust deputy where the dust comes in, it separates out my chips. And inside this, I have uh, some of the soundproof foam along the walls to help with some of this noise. Uh, once it gets separated, the air comes over. <clears throat> it comes over and moves into my Shot Fox one horsepower dust collector. Uh, and this is all lined with soundproofer as well. And then after it goes through there, it goes down into a third chamber where I have my filter bag. And this is all soundproof insulation. And then the air actually moves down through a four inch chamber and out the side. When I was designing this, uh, a lot of people say that you have to make sure that the actual uh, head itself gets enough airflow. So inside this is a channel where air is pulled through, up, and out. And there's two computer fans that sit on top of this pulling air out. So whenever this turns on, air is moving through this and out, and all of the dust is moving in and out there. Underneath all of my tools, I have a set of cabinets. In my first cabinet, I have all of my paints, stains, and finishes. 
I keep these inside because my garage isn't temperature controlled all year long. In my other cabinet is my air compressor, which sits inside of a soundproof cubby. I have two hard lines running from that. The first is to this hose to clean off my tools. And then the second runs outside the room to this hose reel so I can use my pressure pot and clean things out here as well. On the outside of the workspace is all of my storage cubbies for my resin blanks and my acrylic blanks and burl pour pearls. My acrylic blanks and my burl pores. That. Wood that's been stabilized. This is my sanding area. I have all my sanding sheets here, my sanding table. And this is my clamping area. All my clamps are held here. And underneath this workstation is my clamping station where I do all of my inlays for all of my pendants and my knife handles. And this just slides underneath that workstation. On this far wall is my two-stage vacuum pump and vacuum chamber where I stabilize all the wood for my uh, knife handles and my pendants. Next to that is the pressure pot that is for my Alumilite resin for my casting. This is my resin wall. I use a lot of stone coat countertops pour to pour and I do a little bit of casting with the stone coat countertops as well. So I use the Alumilite for my casting for small things like blanks and pendants and for casting on large surfaces like inlays on my CNC, I do the stone coat countertops casting epoxy. And that concludes the downstairs shop. All right guys, thanks for taking the tour of the shops with me, both my upstairs garage shop and my downstairs uh, basement dust studio. If you liked what you saw, make sure to smash that like button or whatever the hell people say nowadays. Uh, if you didn't like what you saw, then I guess we won't, we won't see you on the next one.